Further north along the Pacific Flyway, an entire island among the San Juan Islands provides refuge for wildlife, like these harbor seals. Other wildlife supported here includes the night heron and the great blue heron. Of special interest to me is the murrelet. This incredible bird nests in old growth forest. It will build its nest up to 60 miles inland to lay its eggs. Then it flies those 60 miles back to the ocean to catch fish and it brings those fish back to its chicks going back and forth to nourish its young. Without the old growth forest, the murrelet can't survive or reproduce. They're what, Richard? Marbled murrelets. The island also provides refuge for cormorants. These birds are easy to identify by the way they dry out their wings, spreading them like this after diving for food. Cormorants are usually seen near water. A look at their bills further inform us of their diet. Another great blue heron flies by as we circle the island in a skiff. The public is not allowed on the island. Officials enforce this rule for the benefit of the wildlife. This effort seems to pay off. This area is teeming with birds. In addition to the wildlife refuge system, other areas provide a haven for animals. The Elkhorn Slough National Estuary and Research Reserve provides field laboratories for scientific research and education about estuaries. Elkhorn Slough also provides essential habitat for over 700 species. That's all for segment one. We'll be back with segment two right after this. The Pelicans of Pismo Beach. Learn how these California brown pelicans survive DDT to reclaim their coastal habitat. Watch Ramping Up Your English on RVTV Voices. This is segment two of episode 69. Some wildlife refuges in the United States have been in existence for over a hundred years. This bird was probably the first to be protected by law. Over 2,000 years ago, Africa's sacred ibis was protected by a law that imposed the death penalty for anyone killing one of these birds, even by accident. Sacred ibises could be found in royal palaces during the Golden Age of Egypt. The remains of some have been found buried with pharaohs. Sadly, the sacred ibis is now extinct in Egypt. However, they are common in sub-Saharan Africa. In North America, Canada geese are protected by access to wildlife refuges and hunting regulations. They aren't endangered, but Canada geese are widely hunted as game, and that hunting is regulated by game wardens. I remember hearing that in Louisiana it was against the law to sneak up on a goose. Hunters could wait in a blind and shoot when the goose comes within range, but sneaking up on them was strictly prohibited. These geese live in Oregon. Oregonians can see these geese year-round, even when they raise their young, called goslings. These geese are found at the Denman Wildlife Area near Medford, Oregon. Most geese are migratory. They migrate to the north to reproduce where their young are less vulnerable to predators. Then they make these great migrations south in winter. They need wildlife refuges during this great migration. Geese often spend winter in Louisiana where there's plenty to eat and it's not frozen like the north. Snow geese also migrate to Louisiana during the winter. Snow geese populations are strong numbering in the millions. They breed on the Arctic tundra. As soon as the goslings learn to fly, it's time to head south. Post-harvest rice fields are a favorite winter stopover where they gorge on grain that's been spilled. They need to fatten up for their summer migration back to the tundra. Their great migrations are one of the wonders of nature. The sky fills with the large flocks flying in V formation. Some flocks travel over 2,000 miles without stopping. 
When the flock lands to eat and rest, they post guards at the edge of the flock to warn of danger. With all the challenges faced by wildlife, it's heartening to see some species flourish. Hearing the squawks and hanks of migrating geese, or just seeing a few of them floating on the river, we're reminded of the riches of nature. The United States is not alone in providing refuges for wildlife. Worldwide, critical habitat is set aside. While important for all wildlife, these areas are especially critical for endangered species. Along with the wildlife refuge system, some areas are set aside and managed for the study of wildlife. We'll learn about that and more when we see part two of the video on wildlife refuges. This ends segment two of episode 69. We'll return with segment three after this. Hi, I'm Regina Ayers and the host of Getaway Girl. Join me to learn how travel can open you up to new people, new experiences, and new inspirations. You can take on a new persona when you travel, lighter, freer, more willing to be spontaneous and able to just go with the flow. I know I do. You can join me and travel around the world. Join me soon for Getaway Girl. Getaway, getaway, getaway now. Getaway, getaway, getaway now. Take a plane, take a train, take a car. Just getaway, getaway, getaway now.